Someone in the comments had recently asked me if I still use that Ugreen charger that I recommended whenever I did. <laughs> and, and the answer is yes, I still do use it. I use it quite often. But there is one little nagging thing that has occurred with this that I'm hoping to resolve in this video. So in my attempts to open this thing up and I chewed up the input side here and I chewed up around all the plastic here and I eventually got it cracked open because it was it was ultrasonically welded shut. I think I dislodged something not meant to be taken apart. And so when I plug it in, it still dutifully turns on and shows it's the LEDs. And I'm gonna take a completely charged set of batteries out of another charger. Those that know that sound will know that that is the the cross technology is just off camera there. Ooh, this is an EBL cell that got crushed in some, well, not crushed, but just the little label got squished. And it's a combination of LADAs and EBLs. So these just are coming off the charger. Like the charger's been running the overnight and they're, they're done charging. They're saying full. Here it is sitting in this Ugreen charger now. The Ugreen charger sometimes just shuts off. And I think that's because when I opened it up, I actually dislodged part of this the two two part circuit board, and if I squeeze it, it'll turn back on again and start charging again. Before we go into the second part of, it's beautiful that it just demonstrated. I wasn't sure if it was going to actually show that behavior, which is awesome that it did. Before I get into that second part, the first part is answering the question about the batteries and why one battery might sit for a longer period of time charging, and the others will finish charging rapidly in a charger when all the batteries seem like they have the same state of charge? And the short answer, it may not be a satisfying answer, but but the answer that it's, I understand it from a lot of experience around battery management systems and battery charging controllers and things like that, and the batteries themselves as well, is that they are a chemical unit. This is a chemical device. And so when you're charging these devices, it's not an absolute state of charge. No battery has an absolute, absolute state of charge, but the battery tech topology or the battery chemistry that comes closest to that is lithium ion. Like you can't go beyond a certain voltage or you will make the battery become very unhappy or trip the, the overcharging protection. But when it comes to nickel metal hydride cells, these are, they're more flexible. They're, they're, they're fine with being a slightly overcharged and they'll just start dissipating that extra charge as heat. Sometimes with these chargers that are looking for that, I think it's a negative dV over dt, so the, the derivative of the voltage over time. It's looking for that ne negative derivative. So, you, so instead of the voltage increasing over time at a certain rate, it stops at some point and then kind of comes down a little bit. And then this detects that. This detects that drop in voltage. And then it goes, oh, the cell's done charging and it stops charging. But when the cells are really, really close to being fully charged, it might miss that. It might miss that threshold, especially when they're being charged at a lower current setting. And this Ugreen charger is operating at 600 milliamps. So that's kind of a lower, it's a lower current compared to these, some of these other chargers that we've seen that are hitting the cells with two amps, 2.5 amps, up to three amps. So those, it would hit the cell really hard with a lot of current and you would definitely see that curve come back where the cell's like, nope, I'm not taking, I'm not gonna take any more of a charge and it's a more decisive cutoff. And you might think, well, why don't all chargers do that? Why don't all chargers just charge really, really fast, use, use a lot of current so that they get a very decisive cutoff? Well, with that, you have the, the issue of the cell heating up because it's, it can't take that much current. You might way undercharge the cell because you might get an artificial uplift in the battery voltage. And then if you just terminate the charging at that point and say the cell's done, you might be charged at only about 75 to 80% of the total state of charge that this cell can approximately handle. And for the fast chargers out there, like one like this that I use as well, that can charge one cell at 3.6 amps. This one does state in its manual that it will charge to up to an 80% full state of charge, minimum 80%. So this is already saying that, hey, if you're charging in this charger, and it's fast charging something, it's probably not gonna be able to hit that full state of charge or close to that full state of charge. I would imagine this one's probably closer to 90, 95% of what the cell can get. It's closer to it than say a faster charger like this. So hopefully that answers that question. If it doesn't, 
leave some comments. With that out of the way, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this charger. Because <laughs> I like it and I use it often. And my solution so far for many months, it's a little bit embarrassing, is just to keep going up to it and just squeezing the enclosure when it turns off while it's charging. And then it starts back up again and it seems to be fine. I'm comfortable with that because what's likely causing it is the fact that this is a two-piece assembly and it has let's remove these two short little screws in the back here. It has a two there's a two circuit board assembly in here. This bottom one and a top one and they're connected to each other via a six pin header. There's the header right there and here is the the pins here and so I'm not I'm pretty sure that when they assembled this thing that it that this back panel is like pressed in here and it's holding this connector together also the pins are a little bit short you notice that as well so maybe the pins are just not long enough like they cut them down a little bit to like get them to fit or something or did they just push out the back a little bit I think I'm going to do a simple thing here. I'm just going to take the soldering iron, heat it up, and push all these pins forward a little bit. Let's see if I can get each pin to move forward a little. I don't know if that's going to work with the... If not, I might solder suck all this out. That would be more involved. But let's see if I can just heat up the soldering iron. That's not plugged in. My guess is that it's that's the, that's the issue. It, my, my next step, I could just wire on one side on this side. I could wire on this side, remove the pins, just tack on wires on this side, and then they would come out and then wire to the surface mount connector on this side, and then it would just be connected to it instead of a board to board connector, which would be preferable. But I feel like they just shorten these pins. You can see how the pins are shorter than, do I have any full length pins? Here we go. I'm just taking this, this sad, the sad Raspberry Pi, and you can see how sh much shorter. You need to really crop those pins down to get them to I think fit, but I'm not sure if that's necessary. If I were to just to grab this and press these six pins in, because I think they have the same pitch, yeah, they do. Yeah, it fits all the way down. You can see where there's a little bit of the pin showing. So it may not, it may just be slightly too long, but clearly this is too short, is what I'm getting at. So. Soldering iron still not plugged in. Who didn't plug in my soldering iron? Oh, I didn't plug it in. There we go. This has been a great charger. I really do like this charger. My only gripe, like I said, to however many years ago, year and a half ago when I did this review, is the channels are really deep. So to get the batteries out, you saw I was using this, I used a little plastic pry tool to get the batteries out. Or I just like whack it on my hand, which probably exacerbated this issue is why I need to fix it. I think I said in that video that they likely did that so the batteries are really deep inside this chassis and are co are covered so that they could have they could use plastic just plastic because it's cheap it's a really inexpensive charger to get enough conduction to these thermistors so that you can get an actual representative correlation between the actual battery temperature and whatever maximum set point. Uh, they have before this thing quits charging. So like these cells generally don't want to go above 60 degrees Celsius when it's charging. So they probably have this set to something like 50 or 45 or something like that and it'll, it'll cut off. So the soldering iron is all warmed up. I'm just gonna grab this and hopefully I can just push these. Oh yeah, they move. Ooh, 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 that may have been too far. I don't wanna push it all the way out. Oh crap, that was too far. Eh, let's go for it, whatever. I'm just gonna push it all the way down without them falling out. And if it stops working, what I found is that it's it's getting power, but it's not getting the power to control the battery output. That seems to work. Wow, that really did work. It might be a little too, it might be a little too far and I might have, you know, weakened the mechanical structure on the back because there's not a lot of of the pin on the other side of the board here. I recognize that. That's finished. Let's flip this thing around. Let's get the, um, how did this go? This way? Yep, because the little, 
circuit board, the micro USB port sits in the front there. And we have one screw holding that in. Yeah, these screws are not the best. They're not that great, so they're not holding it particularly well. And then I'll push this back down in there. Oh, that definitely fits snugly. Hopefully this will work for as long as this little charger will keep working. I mean, if you don't take it apart and don't crack the whole case apart, it works great. So, you know, but if you do, you wanna keep using it. Let's plug it in. Turns on, nice. Let's pop some batteries into it. And we'll, it's intermittent, so you may, we may not get a, an immediate ver verification but generally like after about 30 or 40 seconds, it'll, the lights will just go off. So let's see what happens. Let's make sure it actually works too, uh, that I didn't hose it so badly that I'm not getting, like it's not blinking and actually no charge currents going into the batteries. That would be kind of, just, that'd be sad. So let's get the USB analyzer in here. Uh, it is stopped charging because I have unplugged it. <laughs> Two watts, we're climbing, climbing. Four watts, five. This gets up to about six watts. And it is going to jump back and forth between five, six watts. Well, this, I think, has worked. I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep charging more cells with it like I usually do, and we'll see if I have to squeeze <laughs> the enclosure. Well, that's it. It seems to be working, so I'll keep an eye on it and let you know down in the comments if it uh, if it worked out thanks for watching and take care